Welcome everyone. If you are just joining us, this is our long awaited um, talk with Dr. Franz today about men mental health. We try it back in June, but because he's so busy, <laughs> we couldn't make it happen then, but I am so honored to have him with me today. Franz is also my cousin, yes. I am so proud to, to call you my cousin, my mon compère too. That's why. <laughs> He's the godfather, Jamal's godfather, my first child. So. Um, I am so honored that you're giving me your time today. I'm so appreciative. Um, let's get started. We're gonna. I'm going to introduce you formally. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if I can share my screen. Welcome, Dr. Franz. Um, Coach Irma present. Let's talk men mental mm -hmm. health. Welcome, Dr. Franz George. Franz George is a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Dr. George is a, like I said, is a psychiatric nurse practitioner born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. He migrated to the U.S. state, the United States, in 1984. He completed his high school education upon graduation. He attended City College School of Nursing in New York, where he obtained his Bachelor's of Science in Nursing in 1982. You aging yourself, Mokobe. 1992. Don't, don't 1992. Make it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to take a whole 10 years off. <laughs> he began his nursing career at, as an RN at Inner Faith Medical Center in Brooklyn. In 2002, he received his master's with a concentration in health administration from Central Michigan University. He was promoted to nurse practitioner, to nurse manager for two mental health units a few months after he receives his master's. That means he was a hard worker. Um, Dr. George worked in that capacity for two years, then relocated to Georgia in 2004. While in Georgia, he held several psych positions at numerous institutions and did home health care. In 2014, he completed his master's in nursing practitioner um, at university, at Walden University. He obtained his doctorate in psychiatric nurse practitioner certificate at Brandman University in 2019. He worked as a mental health consultant at several nursing homes and assisted living facilities. He worked at a mental health clinic for three years before he decided to open his private practice, virtual mental health practice in July of 2021. He is happily married to his exceptional wife for over 27 years and have three wonderful children. And your family just studied growing. Very soon you'll be grandpa. <laughs> I can't, can't wait. <laughs> can't wait, huh? <laughs> Look at your beautiful family. Oh my God. When I go over, I have top tier um, VIP treatment when I go visit my cousin, okay? <laughs> In all seriousness, mental health um, is such a taboo subject, especially for men. Let's get started. So why do you think that mental health is such a taboo subject for yes. all, but mostly for men? Good morning, everyone. And thank you for my beautiful cousin, Emma, for such a wonderful uh, you know, presentation for for giving me the opportunity and uh, so for such wonderful introduction, I mean, and for giving me the opportunity to be here this morning to talk about something that I'm really passionate about. Um, a lot of time people ask me, what, uh, what happened on all things in nursing? Why did you choose mental health? And my answer has always been, I never chose mental health. Mental health chose me. Mm. Um, because uh, that when I was in school, there's two things I said I would never do. I said I would never work nights and I would never do mental health because those <laughs> and then uh, and then but God had a different plan. When my first job, I got a position at nighttime. I, and then when I was while I was there, 
uh, I got laid off because the, the, the institution was having some financial issues. And next thing they called me back, they said, well, the only position we have is, is in psych. Do you want it? I said, something is better than nothing. Let me give it a try. Mm. And that was, that was the best decision. And, and I actually believe never say never because you, ne you, don't, you never know what God has planned for you. So thank you. Well, to go back to the question, um, yes, uh, as we all know, there's a stigma associated with, with mental health. And, so, and then if we go back to our culture, there's some cultural issues. Men, uh, men always feel like they have to be on top. They have to be the person in charge. So it's for them, for them, it's, it's really hard for them to express their feelings. So let people know exactly how they're feeling. So because of that, instead of talking, uh, whereas you see women, they, they will call a friend and say, I'm not, things are not going well, they're crying, they, they, they lend out that, that emotion. Men, men, on the other hand, keeps things to themselves. And then they result by, by doing other things that, that are harmful to them. They get, a, they get into uh, gambling, they get into alcohol, they get into drugs. And then when these things, and then these things are just temporary fixed, they make you feel good briefly. But when those things are gone, the, the main issues that, that cause you to, to, to go in, into drugs is still there. So therefore, when they feel like, well, I have nothing to live for, and that's the reason that men are five times more likely to, to die by suicide than, than female because wow. of, of all those issues. Now that mental health, everybody's talking about mental health. Everybody's talking about trauma. Um, now with all these talks around mental health in your practice in your career have you seen any changes that is it getting better is it getting worse i know um covid didn't help anybody as far as yes. mental health so let can you elaborate on that is there a dip yes it going yes that's a very good question uh, talking about trauma uh can you imagine um uh, especially during covid uh, there's a lot of, um, I see, I see um, people from the age of five, and I, and I have a client over 90 years old. As well, I got a client that I saw last week, she's 99 turning 100 this, this oh um, Tuesday. I, I need to make a note to give her a call. Yeah, she's turning 100, so she's way up. Wow. So I see a, a, a wide range of individuals. Now, during COVID, trauma was more, even, even, even more pronounced. Uh, can you imagine that a kid that used to go to school uh, to, I mean, they, they have the trauma at home. So the, going to school uh, will, will have been a place for them to go where they feel safe. But because of COVID, they weren't able to go to school. So whoever was the perpetrator, they had to be with that person at the house 24 hours. Mm. So could you, you could imagine the reason why during COVID that there were more uh, suicide, there were more evidence of depression, there was more, uh, you know, hospitalization for a psychiatric problem because the people didn't have an outlet. People, people sometimes go to the park, but nobody was going out. People right. were going, uh, couldn't go to the movie, couldn't go to a club, you couldn't go to a, a, a restaurant. So people were stuck. Hey, if you're in a good situation, it's good for you. But if you are in a bad and abusive situation, it didn't help. So that, that's, you that's what happened. You had to stay there and deal with the abuse. <laughs> you had to the, that's correct. So, and and sometimes sometimes it's not it's not because the person wants that person does not have an outlet. Maybe the, that person is the is the male of the house and is the provider, and then that person may, might be an immigrant that does not have a green card and doesn't have any source of income, so they have to deal with that person. I'm just giving an example. There, there are multiple of, 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 of um, examples, but this is one of the examples that I encounter a lot where the, the, the person in charge, the male, or sometimes it's female too, but most of the time it's men, it's that, that when they're in charge, um, and the, 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 because they know that the person totally depends on them, so they, they use that as leverage. Um, it, it's, I'm glad you brought up... Um, immigrants. Immigrants. Um, I think in the people from other countries, the islands, Africa, there's a whole different layer on how they deal with um, mental health. 
to a point where there's an African lady that I work with and her daughter was going through some issues. And I remember her, she said to me, Irma, it's not just a medical thing. When I was going with my family member that had some issues, she said, it's not, it's not a, it's not a medical thing. She, she insisted that it really was spiritual. Mm. Um, she said when her daughter went through all this, at the end of it, she was she became like a psychic. Mm -hmm. And I've heard these stories before from different people. What is your take on that? Your as your profession, do they even look at that as a possibility? I also work for a mental health administration office where we have different program, like peer peer support groups that mm -hmm. are dealing with these same things. So what are, what is your take on that? Uh, well, <laughs> well um, um, culturally, um, you know, we as, as, as uh, you know, African-Americans or black, as we say, um, mental health is a, ta is a taboo for us. We, we don't, uh, um, so, and Haiti, for, for, for instance, um, <laughs> unless you're going outside and throwing uh, wax, <laughs> you're not crazy. Mm -hmm. So so a lot of people are dealing with a lot of emotions, a lot of things, but because we don't, because society in general, we don't, we don't know much about mental health. A lot, so, so we're not able to provide them with the type of support, like, like you just mentioned, the mm -hmm. peace support that you have. It's a good outlet. Uh, somebody comes in and they find a, a group of people that are dealing with the same situation and they feel like, well, I'm not alone. But and when it comes to spiritual, uh, that's not that's outside of my realm. So I'm I'm not more comfortable talking about it because I do not know much mm. uh, how there might be a possibility, but that would be uh, I don't have any scientific background to elaborate on that. I appreciate that because I feel like the medical system doesn't that doesn't acknowledge it, whether mm -hmm. that's a good thing or bad thing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it should be looked at. Looked at. Yeah, it's a good idea. But uh, but that but there there are certain things that people have, and people think that well they are superpower. But there's something called uh, um, um, hallucination that I could be I, I could be sitting next to you, and or you could be sitting over there, and I'm talking, and then you said, "Friends, who are you talking to?" But friends is having a total conversation with another person that nobody else. A whole bunch of people, possibly. <laughs> Yeah, a bunch of people. I'm having, I'm laughing. I'm thinking, saying, what, what's going on? Why is Fons laughing? You don't know, but Fons is having a total <laughs> a, 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 a conversation with a total different stranger that nobody else can see. So, in that case, people might think, oh, they have superpower, but it's actually something called hallucination, which is uh, you know part of schizophrenia. Part some people with bipolar. Sometimes you know, there's two type of bipolar. There's depressive and there's this, there's a, a manic phase. When the people are on the manic phase, sometimes. And sometimes substance abuse, when people use too much drugs, sometimes it affects their brain and it makes them hallucinate. For my elderly patients, some of them have UTI, urinary tract infection. And when they have the urinary tract infection, it interferes with the mental health and they start saying yeah. things and people think, oh, what's going on? <laughs> is it voodoo or is it supernatural? <laughs> <laughs> but it actually is, uh, it's actually some chemical imbalances that, that's going on with the person at that time. Whether, whether there, there might be some other things involved, uh, there, there haven't been any study done to prove that yet. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. the, the okay. Like you said, the possibility might be there, might exist. I mean, I, maybe that's that, that maybe I, Coach Fema might do some research and find out that and become <laughs> <laughs> a multi-millionaire, who knows? <laughs> um, I just thought it was funny because even in the church, um, I had a pastor who said, um, when people are hallucinating like this, they just need to stop talking to the spirit. Nah. And I'm it's, like, it's, it's easy, easy said than done. Easy said than done. Because um, remember, um, uh, the, the hallucination sometimes is so strong, so real that people follow, uh, it's called common hallucination. The hallucination might tell you, go jump of, of a bridge. Why do you think people would just go and, uh, and jump. People take a gun and shoot themselves. Uh, the voice is telling them, and they believe that voice. 
Uh, yeah, same way people have a belief on a super being God that they haven't seen. And they, you know, when they're hearing that voice, they might think it's, it's God telling them they don't, they're not worth leaving and take a gun and shoot. And some people have done that. Wow. And some people have, some people have, have, have shot themselves and they didn't die. But when they die, when they ask them, and they will tell you that they, they had voices and they, be, they truly believe the voices was real and the voices telling them they, not, they were not worth living and that they needed to jump or they needed to shoot themselves. So those voices are, are real. Uh, and then um, what I would like to tell people, um, it's not natural for, for somebody to be sitting in place and talking to themselves. So if you, if you notice it, your family member, if you have a friend and notice those changes, please help them seek mental health. There's, uh, there's a lot of things. It doesn't have to be medication. There's something called psychotherapy where they can do therapy with the person and help them understand the difference between a true voice and a voice that's not real. Mm -hmm. like that. And then there's, there are medication called antipsychotic medication. And there's so much newer ones. The older ones, some people used to be afraid of them because they make you gain weight and they make you have um, um, something called TD, tardive dyskinesia, where your hand shakes, your mouth a little heavy. Some people got too drowsy because of that. The antipsychotic uh, in the 70s, 80s, they got bad names. But they have so many newer ones that are wonderful. That much people, better, but much better. Yeah, I, I have people in medical school that come to see me and I'm giving them medication and they're thanking me and say, oh my goodness, I don't know how I would have done it if I didn't come to you. And I have, yes, and I have doctors, I have engineers, I have other people. So I, I want people to feel that mental health, uh, it, there's a fine line between uh, uh, sin and insane. So one little thing that happen in, in your family life can tip you over. So it's not mm -hmm. the end of the world. There are help available. Um, as long as you have support from your family, from friends, it's always good to have a line of communication, an open line with somebody. It could be a church member, it could be a pastor, it could be a sister, a cousin, somebody, so that when things are not going so well, you can call that person and interact and let them know, this is how I'm feeling. And this is what the part of going back to men again, and that's the a, that's a thing that we don't do well. We don't like telling people. Uh, uh, we don't like to ensure our expression. It's not even our fault. I remember when I was growing up, I grew up with my grandma, grandparents, and then if I if I if I was running and I fall and I and I hurt myself, I started crying. They would they would even beat you and said, "You're a man. Men not supposed to do that." Enough. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you a woman? Why are you crying for that? That's all this thing stick in your mind and make you feel like I'm not. I'm, I'm supposed to hold on my feelings, um, uh, my emotion. And that's supposed to be shared, but that's not the truth. When you share your emotion, you're able to get all the helps available to you. So that's that's the thing. I'm glad you are a man that's doing this show with me to talk about the man. Um, <laughs> because sometimes I think us women take it for granted, thinking that we can help them, and we really don't have the proper Oops. words, the proper outlet. Um, you know, my father was an all men man. Yes. Um, I don't think I've ever seen my father cry. That's, um, and let, let me stop you there. And that doesn't mean that there, there, there wasn't things going on in his life that could have made him cry. There were probably a lot of things. He probably was hurting. He probably had a lot of things, but he had to be maxo. I had to be strong. I had to mm -hmm. be firm. I couldn't show people my kids see me. I couldn't let my kids. My kids see me crying. That's a weakness. And we all see it's not a, as well as, as well, fact, it's, it's a strength mm -hmm. when you're a man and you're able to acknowledge that something is wrong and I need to take further step to help improve me because if I'm better, I'm better, things will be better for my family. So that's that's how we have to we have to change that. You're not you're not weak by letting people know that you're hurting. As a matter of fact, you're stronger because you acknowledge something not too many people can acknowledge that something is wrong with them and that they need mm -hmm. to seek help. So that's that's one way we're trying to change things. Uh, we do something called uh, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, where, where, whereas we, we change uh, negative thoughts into positive one. Because we all have positive things in our life, but we don't we don't stress on them. We, we like to bring up all the negative, all the negative one. That and then we so consume, funny. we consume with the negative one and we don't give if you don't give room for the positive thing to shine, to show out. But we all we all have our plus and, and, and minus. God is God is not a God. God knows what he's doing. He's not going to give you all the bad. 
and not giving you some some goods. Sometimes you, you let you let you just let all the bads <laughs> take over your <laughs> your whole mm -hmm. life, consume you, and then and you don't you don't leave space uh, to let the, the the beautiful things that you are doing. Sure. It is a yin and a yang. <laughs> yep. It is a yin and a yang, especially when you're going through something hard. When you're going through something, a family member, your children, your husband is going through something. It's hard to see the light. It's very, yeah. very hard. It takes courage to, to kind of try to move forward, take one step at a time and move forward in that, in that dark time. We have to remember. It, here's another thing that we talk, we're talking about family members. Mm -hmm. Some, the family members caring for the, back in the day, they used to put people with mental health in, in the attic somewhere and tell them don't yes. come down here until company leaves. Mm -hmm. It is such a difficult thing to go through because when the person is not in their right mind, they think you are hurting them. So the people closest to them is who they push away the most, is who they hurt the most. They, they speak all these mean, it could be a sweet person that mm -hmm. turns into like, oh my, and this is a lot of people think that this is evil mm -hmm. because that person became so angry and mad and really try to hurt the people that are around them. That's and people be asking people, well, what did you do to them? Nothing. <laughs> That, yeah, very, very important subject that you're touching there. Uh, there's something called delusion. A delusion is a false, fixed idea, which means no matter what you do, that's the person's view of the world. That's the thought process. Whether it's wrong, whether we all, 99% 99 of the world sees it as wrong, that person sees it as right, and it's right for them. So when you come to your family member and, and you know what they're doing is, is wrong as a mother, as a, as a sister, as an aunt, you wanna tell them, you wanna as try to correct. As a wife, you want to try to correct them and show them, hey, what you're doing is not the norm. This is how you're supposed to do it. Now the person feels you against them because you're going to totally <laughs> against what their belief, what they think is right. So that's why there's always conflict about the person closer because you don't want that, that, that seeing the behavior and you know that that's not like them to behave that, that way. And, and out of your goodness, you're trying to, to, to get them back to the right track, but they don't want to get to the They feel like you're against them. You're pushing them away. And, and that's the reason why a lot of times they will, they will uh, move away or they will not talk to you. They will do some, do something called withdrawn and isolate. Uh, they, they, will, they will go else, somewhere else, maybe in their room and close the door and don't talk. Because you don't understand me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you understand. So when, when when they come to that case, they, they really need help. It's more than you, uh, who's not a professional, um, can help, can deal with. It's time for them to see a psychiatrist, a psychologist, uh, to to bring them back on the right track. It would feel it feels like sometimes you all alone in this situation. To show people that they're not all alone, let's look at some of the numbers. It says that one in five people experience mental illness in a year. Mm -hmm. Men of color are at greater risk. Why is men of color at a greater risk? Yes. Why? Because <laughs> remember, we have to go back. This have to go back to slavery time. Mm -hmm. We already started. We already started at a disadvantage. We already started uh, as oh we you're not as as you are inferior to another group, so therefore it's like <laughs> you already started at the at the bottom and then you 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 working hard and while you're working hard to get to a position to the same level as the other people, mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of roadblocks along those steps. So that that's that's the thing. You you expect it to be the the head of the house. But you, the, you're facing with Jim Crow, you're facing discrimination, and you're not able to, to get a job that pays you enough to su support your family. Now, you, you're not happy because you're not, you're not the man you want to be, and your family is not happy because you're not bringing enough money to support the family. So that's a whole thing that we, ha we have to go back deep to see why men of color are, are more mental illness. It's, it's deeply rooted. Mm. And, uh, Deeply wounded. So sometimes, sometimes people just say, "Well, it's been 
so many years, 200 years ago, it'd be so many, no, it doesn't matter. It's uh, uh, when you had a wound that's never been properly healed that they just put a bandit on, internal, outside it might look good, but internally that wound is still hurting. It still uh, uh, affects you. So that's what happened to black men. So black men, uh, color people need a lot of support a lot of understanding. And we need our queen to understand us. We need our queen to be behind us and to not let the media uh, uh, make us make 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 them feel that black men don't don't are lazy. Black they, we are the hardest working people. Yeah, America was built on the on the back of black men. Black men working cotton, working hours. So we're not lazy at all. Don't let that narrative fool you. We are very strong. So we need support. We need people to understand us. Yes, uh, things might be hard, but no man, believe you me, if, if we had a choice, a man would rather go out there and work and, 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 and be seen by his family as being supportive, as being a provider. So don't let the narrative that uh, all black men are lazy, they just wanna lay down. That's not the truth. We, 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 started at a, at a, we started at a disadvantage and we're trying our best to catch up. Yeah, we, we thrive. We continue to That's thrive. Right. That's yes. right. That is um, true. Do you think the Black women, do you think that we have the tools the, to support our Black men? Um, oh. considering, mm -hmm. considering they wouldn't even open up to you. You don't know how to help. What would what advice would you give us, the brother, the sisters, the wives, the what advice do you give to us? Because <laughs> we don't we don't know yes. where we're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all I can say is that uh, I know, um, the thing is, uh, the funny thing is, uh, if you look at it now, black women, if, if you look at the educational system. The most when you go to college and stuff like that, or uh, taking a, a doctorate degree or master's degrees, most of the classroom is female. The black women are, are very educated. Um, uh, and now that can be seen as a as a threat to the men because I'm supposed to be the person in, in charge. I'm supposed to have the highest education, but meanwhile, a lot of our, our brothers are, are in jail. A lot of them go to war and things like that. So there are more female available to. <laughs> To attend college, mm -hmm. and females are, are now are now getting uh, a made to be in a position of being on top because money talks. Uh, I mean, we all know that M money mm -hmm. money is the is important that to have money. Uh, so if you have money, you can influence a lot of changes. So a lot of times, when the when the black woman has money, for the most part, a lot of time, not I'm not generalizing the whole thing, mm -hmm. but to a man, a lot of that a man might be afraid of approaching a successful woman. Well, 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 if they had approached a woman, the woman probably would have opened up to them. But because they know, oh, she's a lawyer. Uh, well, she's not gonna go with me. I, I don't have anything in my hand. <laughs> I don't have any paper. <laughs> so that, that pushes a lot of, of us, but it's not the woman's fault. So maybe the women have to do their own thing to see what can we do to, to be more inviting, to let because our brothers do that. a lot of us are single. A yes, that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, especially with all those changes now, uh, men, men, men and female, men, they want to be called they, them. <laughs> so there's a lot of, you know, transgender and queer and a lot of these things. So, yes, I feel bad for my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the reality. A lot of black men are in jail. Some of them are, are homosexual and, and things like that. So it, may, it, 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 it reduces the pool of the, those that are available. And That's true. we're not forgetting a lot of, some of them are on drugs, homelessness. So there's a slew of things that are happening. Well, I'm asking my, our sisters to be a little bit more inviting. Let the, don't, um, don't, don't make it, I mean, make us feel comfortable so that we can approach, approach you no matter what level you are. I'm not saying that because if you're a lawyer, you should go out with somebody that's <laughs> very poor, right. but, but make, make, make it seem so that you are you are available and you could talk to them. That's great advice. That's great advice. Yes. Um, 
we have a lot of work to do in our community, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Have another step. laughs> uh, um, I think, uh, I'm, I'm glad to say that let me tell you I've been in practice two and a half years mm -hmm. uh, I, I've yet to have a Haitian person in my practice oh. and, and then my practice is full all I'm seeing is I'm seeing Caucasian I'm seeing a lot of Asian Indian I'm seeing because those people understand what it means to seek help take care of those your people, mental yeah, state that's right and, I, and what I tell my patient is that if you are diabetes, wouldn't you go see a doctor so that they can give you some medical insulin, uh, some something to, to lower down your blood sugar? If you have high blood pressure, wouldn't you go down to go see a doctor to give you antihypertensive medication to lower your blood pressure so that you don't have a heart attack or stroke? Yes. I said, then why if you if you have depression, you wouldn't want to come see me or you want to go some, see a psychiatrist or a, a psychologist? Why? See, that's the question because people don't, they don't put the, the mental health as priority. They, if they have um, the medical help, they'll go and, and get the help. But right. if it's mental health, um, uh, I can deal with it. They, they try to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can, but a lot, a lot of times, um, if that problem is not, if not, if the issue is not taken care of properly, um, it's going to come back and back. It's going to be like a circle going back on. You do, you do need, at some point, you need to, to break that, that chain, that circle. Right. And get right back on before track. COVID, I remember going to the doctor and I was very, very surprised that the doc, my primary care asked me, how is your mental health? How are you feeling emotionally, mentally? Wow. And they was really stressing on that. I'm like, what's going on? Do you think something's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, you have a good primary care because it's taking its time to do it. But a lot of time primary care don't have time to do that. So that's very good that it's huh. taking that. It's taking the time to, to ask that question because he know he understands. Um, because your mental health affects your whole being. So if you're not well mentally, it's gonna affect you. If you're under a lot of stress, stress can affect your blood pressure. Stress can make your diabetes worse. Stress can make your uh social life environment worse. So I was and, grateful for that. I was grateful because that was when right before my life was going to flip upside down. Um, I think she asked me, are you sleeping well? Mm -hmm. That was a major thing for me with menopause. Yes. You, you, there's your body is going out of rock. You the don't know what's changes. going on with you. You sad, you upset yes. for no reason. So, and I think maybe it's because of my age. She knew that I was going to face all this. Um, so I, I was grateful and I was hoping that everybody's doing that. Like you said, a lot of the primary care because that's where it starts. That's why People a lot of my referrals, a lot of my referrals came from um, primary care physician, patient come, uh, and your doctor know you. If you, if you normally come bubbly and smiling and, 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 and jovial, and then you come you, your hands is thing like that, your facial expression is sad, the doctor knows, they can, they can feel it, they can see that so, this is not the normal Emma that comes to my office. Mm -hmm. So that opens the door for them. So they, they, are, they are like the first line. They're the one that you go to see first. And then we, we, we are we're depending on them to make that referral uh, to them. Some, some doctors are very good, they have the time. Some of them will start you, even start you on some medication or they'll even do some psychotherapy with you. And others will will, will uh, give you a referral to see a mental health provider like me or a psychiatrist. Right. Um, yeah. This thing says men are less likely than women to seek help. We talked about that um, stressful life events. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody who was doing fine and something happened and somebody was saying to me that their mother became mentally ill after a car accident so yes. <laughs> so some is it, it, that's not always the case though sometimes it's where does it come from is sometimes is it an event or mm -hmm. is it some people get raped and never get back from their normal that's selves right. mm -hmm. um and sometimes right. can it is it possible that it just show up and something trigger it was it in you before i guess that's yeah. the question yeah we're going along something called um ptsd uh, mm -hmm. which means an event that happens to you in the past 
and that and that you will live in that event. So if you are if you are in a car accident, every time you're gonna go drive on a car, you you always are feeling you you always scared because you're thinking that again that you may have an, another accident. Although that the possibility of you having a second accident is, is very very minimum, but mm -hmm. uh, because you've had that experience and you know how it felt, you just don't want to go back there again. Um, so I, I had kids who were near drowned kids that would anytime they see water, even at the house, they would not go in the bathtub because they, they think that if they go in the, in the bathtub, that they might be drowning because mm -hmm. they had an experience at a friend house pool where they thought the pool was only five feet and the pool, pool was deeper and they almost drowned. And because of that, any type of water bring that, yes, that. A lot, of, a lot of time people have something called the subconscious. Uh, and, uh, when somebody's way, it affects them a lot of time because it, it even affect them with their future relationship because of the trauma they experienced during, during that way. And it, although that person that they are with now is a good person, is, wants to treat them right, but every time they get intimate, it brings back that memory. So un unless they really have deep, uh, you know, a psychotherapy to help them, uh, it's going to be very hard for them to maintain relationship because mm -hmm. there's a trust, the trust, because, uh, that's, especially if it was done by a family member. And that mm -hmm. happens a lot. Mm -hmm. I have so many kids that are abused by their grandparents, that are, that are abused by their uncle, uh, that are abused by their uh, uh, mom's boyfriend. Uh, the, yeah, so people that they feel comfortable, they feel like, they, they, oh, oh, this is Uncle Joe, I can stay here. Uh, Uncle Joe is not going to do anything to me. And then Uncle Joe uh, uh, disappointed them and did something. So that, that is real trauma. And that trauma we really have to be dealt with in, in order for the, that child or whoever, it could be an adult too, uh, to, to have some kind of normalcy in their life. Mm. Because, that, that's, that's, because a lot of time people keep those things. Uh, the person might be laughing, they might be going out to a party, but something happens and then just click, all of a sudden you see the person drop and they start crying or they start being withdrawn, don't want to interact because they never process that the, the right way. They never uh, seek the proper treatment for it. And how about when, when do, do you think that it's hereditary? Some of the some mental health some some of men, mental health uh, conditions are, are yes especially bipolar disorder is number one uh, if you have a family member with bipolar like especially your mother or father you, you're you're very your chances of, of getting that is higher than fifty percent mm -hmm. so yeah some of them are bipolar is depression also so if it can go from family but it's very hard to know it's family because back then no no nobody thought they had mental health so so when, we have when some I'm, people in our family that you know we look at back then it's like not, okay, not, now going wrong. back now going back i could diagnose a slew of people <laughs> <laughs> that, something's wrong yeah that that, that 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 the behavior that they were displaying were not uh, the norms but hey so that's what happened so a lot of times uh, that's the reason why when you do an initial assessment you ask all this question about family members, are there anybody in the family that has, that's suffering the same thing? Uh, and then we say, oh yeah, my mom used to do that, or my dad used to do that, something like that. So yes, there is, so part of it is, uh, part of the, that is, you know, biological, other part is also the, your lifestyle, uh, yeah. substance abuse, drugs, alcohol, things like that, the environment that you were with, a lot, all of these things uh, um, make, who you who you are, cultural uh, things. There are certain things that you know in, in our culture that we think is, is good, but when you go outside and people say, "Wow, what is that?" So that, that is, it's always good to understand to ask people. I, I ask my patient all the time, "How do they do it in your country? And what is considered? Is that considered a norm?" Because you might say that's that's unusual for somebody to be dressing that way or putting all this makeup on. But for them, it's, it's, a, it's, it's beauty. So we have to, oh, that's, not, that's what this. So if they see that's beauty and it doesn't interfere with them, you leave them alone. You, you know, you're not going to try to change who the person yeah. is. Yeah, you try to help them get back to the right track. It, it, the goal is not to cure them or to fix them. It's not, a lot of time in mental health, a lot of the mental health diseases, 
there's no cure for them. There's things you give to help the person function in society. And, 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 and they have to be consistent. Mm. A, lot, a lot of time, and, and that happens so many times. Patients come to see me very depressed and things like that. You, you give them antidepressant, you do some therapy with them, and they're feeling good. They're feeling top of the world. They, they weren't going out. Now they're going out. They, they, they weren't dating. They're dating. So they think everything is fine. So they stop taking the medication. And, and then when I call them, the mother's, oh, she's in the hospital. What happened? I told her to take the medication, but she thought she was doing good or something happened. Mm-hmm. And, that, I, and I hear that story so many times because people feel, and then I always tell them, do you ever stop taking your blood pressure medication? No. Well, then why would you take, why would you stop taking your antidepressant? Well, Dr. George, I feel so good. I thought, I thought, I, I said, well, that's the reason why you have a poor heart. There's sometimes we, we might be able to, to, to uh, stop your medication, but we have to do it as a team. And, and, and you have to promise me to follow up with me so that I can double check to make sure that you're still on the white line. And if you're, right. trying to, if you're trying to move to the curve, and I need to, and if, I, if I need to increase the medication back to get you back white and trap, we need to do that. But you cannot do it on your own. You have to do it in conjunction with your provider. So that's the best way to do it. That's the best advice. Just yes. because you feel good doesn't mean it's over. Oh, no, it's far from over. <laughs> and I tell you, you know why you feel good? You feel good because I put you on Zoloft. You feel good because I put you on Zyprexa because the, the psychotic symptoms you were having has subsided because you're no longer hearing the voices. You no longer have the psychotic symptoms because this, the entire psychotic is doing what it's supposed to do. But once you remove it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to, you're not going to feel it immediately. But at some point, the, the, the drug level in your in your brain is going to go down, and when it goes down sub uh, to sub therapeutic, then you're going to start having all the symptoms, uh, or sometimes even worse. Um, let's see if there's any. Um, let's see if there's oh there's we have some interaction on Facebook. It just popped up. At this point, what do we do? Juju, can you clarify? Uh, Bernadette says that part. So they've been following us. I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we, guys, guys, we, we didn't ignore you. We, we, we're just not poor on that. <laughs> we're just into the conversation. Um, the Black man is fighting everyone outside. They should not have to come home and fight again. Oh, man. Who said that? That's that? Bernadette. Bernadette. Oh, 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 Bernie. That's oh, yes, yes, yes. I agree. I totally agree. Totally agree. Totally um, agree. You can still be approachable, and they still don't approach you. <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> well, in, th- in that case, it's not your fault. You can, it, in, in that case, hey. Uh, now, if I open the door for you to my house, and you you decided to stay outside. It's not my fault it's because the door fault is wide the open. open. <laughs> <laughs> in, that case, in that case, we cannot put it on the blame on, on that. And, and it's not to say the black man is, is 100% innocent. We have a lot of flaws. We have a lot of things that we need to work on ourselves, but we need our queen to be, in our, uh, to be supportive, to, be, uh, to understand us, to understand that where we came from and that we, we might be a little bit more, uh, we, might, we might need a little bit more help than, than, than usual. So... It's okay, and then men, men, it's not, it's nothing wrong to to want that help and to be able to seek it out and to ask your wife, hey, you I mean, know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not myself. I, I need you. I need you to be. I need, I need some quiet time. I need some me time. I need to go hang out with my boys. It's okay. Sometimes we do need that. We do need our me time uh, so that we could go out and 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 and, and talk to other men and see, hey, man, you know what? Lately, this is what's going with me. What, what do you think? So we need that. I mean, that's, that's why a lot of time you see guys who go to the barbershop and, and will talk because they need an outlet. And sometimes they talk about the wrong thing. I'm not talking about those guys, but there are, are, are guys that actually go and, and, and because they need another person to talk to, to let, to let out some of the frustrations, some of the feelings that's, that's going on with them. And, that's, and I encourage that. I don't think they go and talk about their feelings. I think they just go and joke around and laugh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they don't talk about nothing. <laughs> but that's what I said. Some of them go for the wrong reason. Some of them go for the right. Some of them need an outlet. And 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 at the beginning, remember I said 
It's always good to have a supportive. It's always good to have one person that you can rely on. We are human beings. We are social beings. We cannot live in a, in a, in a vacuum. We do need help. We do need to. We do need to know that somebody has our back. I, I, I'm a man. I'm supposed to be with that. But what happened? Something happened to me. I need to know that my wife's gonna be there for me. I need to know that my daughter, my, my son, or, or someone. My sister. And, and then if they're not, if they're not, and then they don't have to be your family member. Sometimes the best people are your friends. Some friends are. Some friends take care of you way better than family member ever. So uh, uh, it doesn't have. To, don't think it's gonna. It has to be your family member. It could be a friend that you met at school, a friend that a neighbor that that calls you and say, "Hey, Bernie, how are you? Do how are you doing today?" That's all. Sometimes that's all you you need. You need to know that somebody care enough to pick up a phone and say, "Hey, how you doing? How you doing?" That's um, all. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for Americans ages from 15 to 20. That's according to the CDC. That's where I get this information from. Yes. Um, suicide is the second leading cause of death for American age 15 and 24. So this happened very early when you look at a child that has a whole life in front of them. Mm -hmm. That's a sad thing. In 2017, Men died by suicide more often than women. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this yeah. in great length. It's because they're so yes. closed up and they don't open up. And um, they don't open up not because they don't want to, it's because that that's that's culture, uh, uh, you know, society uh, norms, the societal norms is that uh, we are we are we are taught that we are made to want to, 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 to believe that as a man, I'm supposed to be strong. And strong mean not letting people in into my world. And then, like I said, you cannot live in a bubble. If you're not, if you're not expressing your feeling, you're not going to get the help. Mm -hmm. Women will cry. You know how many times? Sometimes, even when I was in New York in the train station, sometimes you'll see women sit on the train and put their head down and cry. So they're letting some of that emotion. And then, and by doing so, another passenger might come and say, "Hey, how are you doing? Is, are you, is everything okay?" So you open the channel. You you give. You, you are, it's like, like I said, you open the door to let somebody else come in and, and, and help you out. As opposed mm -hmm. to men, they'll be sitting down there. They'll have a, a, a newspaper so that nobody can see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <face> talk to <laughs> me. <laughs> no eye contact, nothing like that. They just, boil, everything is boiling in. And then when they get home, they, they probably get into their wife. They probably get into the kids and things like that because they never process what the, that's what's truly hurting them. And, and mm. sometimes, they, sometimes they, they, they choose the wrong thing. Sometimes they feel life is not w worth living, and then, and then they just go ahead and and, and end it. Sometimes it, it, women, I know a lot of us. Sometimes this bathroom time. Oh my God, I would close the bathroom door. Sometimes you go in the shower and lay it out. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, I'm, I I pray that men can feel the same thing and and. If you can't talk to anybody, just give yourself the space, the grace to be upset with whatever situation is. And, and so you can be you can let it go because until you deal with the feeling, it's gonna keep coming back. That's right. Very good. And then uh, one more thing to, to add, the reason why men uh, uh, more men died uh, by, by suicide than women, because men used more aggressive method of of to, 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 to end their life. They will use gun and they will jump off the bridge. They will do, they will do things that are, that men, when, they, uh, when that time comes, they will, if they wanna die, they're gonna try something. They're not, they, because we're very scared. We don't wanna be <laughs> in pain. We don't wanna, we don't wanna just time. do it so that we're done. Women will use less uh, thing. The women will try to cut their wrists, thing like that, or uh, do, or, or take, take pills, pills, take pills, thing like that, or those things. Uh, they're more like crying out for help than actually suicide. Although, although it, it depends on the, uh, how deep you cut. Uh, if you if you cut it deep enough, and then uh, you, and then there's nobody there to help black uh, that artery or vein, you, you at some point you're gonna lose, you know blood, you're gonna die. Uh, but at least it's, you're not gonna die immediately. Men, men, when, when men take the gun and shoot themselves, they wanna make sure that they they die. They, so they, they, don't wanna... they come out hard and they That's leave right. out hard, no matter That's... what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out hard. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's no laughing matter, but oh my God. No, it's not, but no, 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 it's not a laughing matter, but it's, uh -uh. <laughs> we just have to, yes. Yeah. Men are less likely to be diagnosed with mental health disorder, like the, because they're not going to the they're doctor. Not, they're not going to go to the doctor and tell them that I'm 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 hurting. And, uh, but That's but so, but 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 you know what? You know how many times that I have wives that call me. You know, I, I've been telling my husband to call, and I know that's not him, but he refused to pick up. So I tell him, I'm going to call. And then they go, they go on psychology today. They go and find me or any provider, and they call and say that. And, and then after that, now when I when I when I started seeing the patient after a while, they said, "Man, I'm so glad that my wife called for me." So that's the type of wife we we asking for. A wife that sees that this is not my man. That's not the man that I need. Mm -hmm. And I, if, if he doesn't want to take the phone and call, I'm going to do it for him. That's the club of support that I was talking about earlier. Things like that. Awesome. Okay. Um, so we have to, despite what they say, we need to really advocate for them. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Um, am I sharing? No, I'm not no. sharing screen. No. Let me share this one. And that's a that's a million dollar question there. Do you see a difference between our generation compared to our children when it comes to mental health? Look at you uh, with your boys. I see. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Do you think uh, they have how do they deal because we raise them differently sometimes i think we create monsters as far as giving them all that they want all that they need because of what we possibly didn't get and not just financial stuff mm -hmm. mentally we couldn't speak to adults we couldn't you know children you don't talk back we yes. give them an outlet to talk back to us and have conversation and understanding um Sometimes I think way too much because. <laughs> but, no, no, no. It's, yeah, that, that is a good question. Uh, we, remember, uh, um, with technology now, uh, before, I, when we were growing up, there, there wasn't much to do. Because of that, we spent a lot of time outside in the sun. We playing, we, we were more like social beings. We, we seek out other, other kids to play one with. But now with social media, with all the games, video games, like that, I feel like it's taken away from the uh, from from the attachment that we once used to have as as a family, the the, the bonding that we used to have. I, I feel that because of um, the techno techno technological advances, uh, we are not as strong as as a family as we once were. Because before we had no choice, the kids had to sit down at the table and talk. Now 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 you sit on the table, everybody's on the cell phone, they, 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 they're doing that. And I have to say, hey, we only we don't see each other every time. This is the time that we sit. That's our time. Please up, take all the phone and leave it up front. This is the time for us to talk. But not too many families do that. Not too many families mm -hmm. are able to do that. Because a lot of times, uh, if the mother is working 12 hours, the father is working, you know, eight, 12 hours too. So the kids are left alone. So uh, so, so uh, uh, um, the computer, this iPhone, is really what them. parenting is waiting our kids. So, uh, well, uh, well, uh, it's to the second, uh, two different generation, but each one has their own issues going on. Now, in terms of, in terms of uh, the mental health, I think they have a head start because when I was growing up, if something was bothering me, I couldn't go to my mother. What, what, what would I say to my mother? And what would she tell me? She said, "Actually, down the corner. Go in that corner. <laughs> go somewhere else with that." But now my kids can come to me. Why? Because they know that that's what I do. Uh, and if, if they have something bothering them, they can come to me. And they have. Uh, that was going some, to, uh, to some issue with his uh, fiance and stuff like that. And when he was going to, he was, uh, that was a dark period for him. He came to me and we sat down as men and I let him see uh, things and try to help them work it out. At the end, it didn't work out, but at least he came out and then we tried to make things out, work out. As opposed to before, we would not, I would not have given him uh, kids, kids would not have come to to, to their right. parents and talk about what's going on. So uh, now I think the uh, the line of communication 
is more open. Between, yeah, it's, it's more open between uh, parents and kids and stuff like that. Although although they may not use it, but it, it's 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 like the, the open door scenario. I explained. They know it's a very bold. They know that. They know that. And then yeah. we and then plus we have the educational background uh, to 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 explain to them why and. And I told them, you know, how many times they tell me, my friend told me, my friend told you that. And I, tell, and I point to the corner of my office with all my degrees. I said, does your friend have this? <laughs> I said, I'm giving you advice for free that, that people are, I'm charging people two, three hundred dollars for. And then you tell me your friend, that does your friend have their own business where they can. <laughs> I said, well, don't tell me about your friend. Okay, listen sit down here and listen and get some good advice. <laughs> that is so nice. Marie Vernon says, how to implement mental health in school as early as middle school? Yes. Well, well, they, they, well they do have uh, a lot of this program in school. The, 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 major, my, uh, the, the major thing that I, I have with school is that a lot of ADSD is the number one issue that I deal uh, with that age group because um, there, a lot of them have problem, they're not able to sit still in class, they, they're all over the place. A lot of time I, I get principals calling me, teachers calling me, please help, 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 because we do everything we can. But the school also has something called IEP where they have uh, uh, they have a program for kids that are that are not able, uh, or who has mental who's mentally challenged, they will provide them with some kind of uh, uh, helper, a person that will come and sit with them in the class and things like that. But with budget cuts, a lot of these programs are, you know, winding down. So, but the school is, is doing that. And remember, uh, depression started at an early age. So the teenage years, when you when when you feel like you, you don't fit in, um, when you're not, some kids are coming with Jordan. Your parents is poor. Your parent cannot buy you Jordan. So you start feeling different, or you're not, you know, you feel left out. So there's a lot of things going on around that time. So we, I do receive a lot of calls from the school. I do see a lot of kids, those um, that age group. And we try to do, I try to do the best. I'm not a psychotherapist. Uh, I, I try to do uh, minimal therapy with them because that's not my line. My line is mostly medication management. And, and, and the best way to deal with those kids is a combination of the two, uh, where they do the therapy and, and do the, the medication. Reason being is because therapy is not going to increase your serotonin. It's not going to increase the dopamine. It's not going to increase the the if if, the, if you have low dopamine, that's what the cause of your depression. Uh, therapy is not going to solve that. So you do need medication to help boost back your uh, dopamine. So I try to let people understand uh, um, the why it's important to have the, the the two of them. But the school the school the school for the most part, at least here in Georgia, they are equipped. They do have. Uh, nursing at the school that uh, if the the kids that doesn't feel why they will go to the nursing uh, station that they will see the nurse and the nurse a lot of times the nurse will make referral if it's if it's something that they're not able to handle if the, the kids need psychiatric assistance they will talk to the parent and then I'll, I'll, um, and they, they, they will send a referral to me then I'll call the parent and we set up a virtual meeting like we're doing now and then uh, and then we talk and then uh, sometimes I tell them Let, let's let's do psychotherapy first. Let's give it a couple of weeks of psychotherapy and see how the kids respond. If not, then we, we talk about you know psychotropic medication uh, to help them deal with whatever emotions. That so these kids that are getting this help, do you think, I'm sure it, it, they will get better and do better um, in life because they, they knew there was a problem and they offered them help early on. Here's a question Bernadette has that seemed very, it's a great question. I have a friend who's going through this with a young son and he isn't communicating with his parents. What do you recommend a course of action should be? That's the hardest. When, when the person is not communicating, when the person is not opening up, the, the first sign of the first uh, sign that the person is willing to get treatment is acknowledging that something is wrong. So when you're not talking, you, you make it very, very hard. Because this is this is this is not in Haiti or this this is not on the island where you could just take a, something and say Uwe Bush should talk. No, yeah. this is something that where you the person has to be ready. America, um, um, there's a fine line between abuse. The person might call and say, "Well, the, my parents are abusing me because my, my parents are forcing me to do something." So in that case, you just have to wait, 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 uh, wait and see approach. 
Uh, because at some point when the kids seeing that things are not going well and for um, for a long time, then at some point they, they're gonna eventually start opening up. Or and and, and kids, there's always uh, if, if it may not be the mother, but they may have a good friend. They may have the, it may be the neighbor that they open with. Find out who helps as influence on your child, and then you go, go through that channel. It doesn't always have to come to mom and dad. It could be a friend outside there that they they, they were close with, and that friend probably knows more about what's going on with the kids than you because they don't want to tell you. Uh, a lot of times they don't want to tell you is because they don't want to hurt you. They, they said, mom already is working hard. Mom already has all the problem. Or little Johnny is already giving mom enough struggle. I don't want to be the one, other one giving her more. She has enough on her plate. So, but but not, not communicating makes it very hard because there's, uh, we cannot force uh, our mental health on a kid. We cannot, we cannot force treatment on a kid. We have to be understand. Uh, the mother has to uh, uh, keep on encouraging. A lot of time, uh, if it's depression, you, uh, make make them feel like I'm there for you. I'm your mom. I love you. Say, it, 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 it's not enough if you say I, I love you to your kids a million times. Although they don't want to hear it, say it because they want to feel it. They want to see, know that they, I'm human. I'm mm -hmm. important. A lot of time, a lot of time, kids would come and tell me, Dr. George, the reason I'm acting like that is because I feel numb. Mm -hmm. I said, elaborate. What do you? I don't feel anything. They call me and said, my grandma, my grandpa died in Puerto Rico, and I, it didn't bother me. But that's not that's not a normal response. When when the, somebody called you and said your grandpa died, most of the time people would be sobbing, would be crying. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't it doesn't affect me like that. So they they are really numb. When they, and, and then that's the part that's very difficult. When they're numb like that, that's when they can do anything because mm -hmm. they don't have. Awareness, they don't have the self-conscious to think, oh, my action could hurt other people. So at that point, you have to be very careful, uh, closely monitor them. If they're sitting in their room all the time, once in a while, go pop the door and talk to them and say, hey, I'm here. Remember, I'm your mom. I'm always available to, to talk. Come and talk to me. But, but, but doing that, show them you care, but it's also give you a time to go and make sure that they're not doing anything else in there. Because if they have weapons, if they have uh, 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 knives, something like that, they can be doing self-harming. So frequent visit to their room, especially when they're not talking, is very, very important. Removing things from the house that can be a potential weapons, also important. It's very hard because you, you, you don't want to hide away all your knives and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when, you have, when you're dealing with the kids like that, uh, sometimes you do have to take measures. Precaution, yes. Yeah to help them um do you think um because what i it therapy i guess by the time they get to you it's really getting them stabilized but when you first see the sign maybe even understand the sign because sometimes the signs are there but you don't know what they are you might think the kids is you know, going to menopause sorry, for, That's right. for teenager, no. I'm sorry, going no. through um, 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 the period, um, hormonal changes. Right. So you don't get them. So would you say it's good to have, to normalize therapy in your family? If people go to a divorce, sometimes they go to therapy with the family, with the kids. Yeah. But unless something happened, we don't, go seek therapy. Yes. Uh, well, let me tell you, you cannot give what you don't what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't know. Uh, it's not like something that was taught to us. When we were growing up in Haiti, did we know about therapy? No. no. Uh, when we, it's, it's, it's all about culture. It's, it's what, uh, but that's why, that's why most of my patients are Caucasians, because you know why? They believe in seeking help for themselves. They, see, they, they believe that, hey, if I don't do anything else, Things don't get worse. I'd rather go and see the doctor and get and, and deal with it right here and there. And why why do they, they, they do that? Because as they were growing up, that's what they saw their parents do. When things weren't going well, they saw their parents went to this uh, uh, to the uh, psychiatrist or to the uh, psych uh, psychologist and seek help. So when you bring your kids to that, you normalize it that way because it's oh, mom and dad used to do it. It's no biggie. Mm -hmm. But when your kids never able to that, when, when the kids know how society views mental health, 
it's very hard for, for the kids to, to want to go and see that. And that's why when, the first thing I tell them when they come to, to my meeting, I said, by law, you are protected. Whatever information that we talk, discuss today is not going to go anywhere. And I can lose my license if I don't protect your, your as unless you or your parents go and tell people, nobody should, would know. So that makes them, that appears, that make them feel comfortable. Oh, oh no. at least my, 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 my secret are, are safe. <laughs> my, nobody gonna know. I said, you're not walking around with a big thing in your forehead saying you have depression, you have bipolar. Unless you, you tell people, they won't know. I have a lot of people that are in college that are in, working. I even have nurses that are working that are bipolar. Once they take the medication to stabilize, you could, you could live a, a, a full life with mental health. Is that people need to know that, that you can live happy. You could have, you could have a successful life with mental, uh, illness. Men, with mental illness if taking the proper step to take care of it. And I think if we normalize it at a very young age, because, you know, I often talk to my boys, Jamal and you take them to the dentist. I started taking them to the dentist two, three years old, um, going to their med, um, primaries all the time. But therapy wasn't part of the deal. Mm -hmm. So I can look at Jamal with a cigarette in his hand. I said, you know what? You're making your teeth that I pay all this money for. <laughs> 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 but I don't have nothing to come back to say, well, we did do therapy for a little bit as a group, but mm -hmm. it is so important. I would love to see us to come to a place where we take regular visits with our children in therapy, because I think that would help them for the rest of their lives. Yes. Remember, that's good. That's good thinking. But remember, this comes with the cost. If you're thinking about you have bills to pay, you have that, and it depends on your income. Some people can do it because they, they have the income to support it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come in <laughs> to see me, it's not cheap. When you come to see a psychiatrist, it's even more money mm -hmm. because I only make 80% of what a psychiatrist make. So it's even more money when they go see a psychiatrist. So we do have to take that in consideration. So, um, and I do, some, I, do, I do do some charity work. I have a lot of family members that comes to me and crying and tell me, and I see, the, I see them, them because my goal is not just to make money. money. Making money is good, but making sure that somebody feel, feel happy, making sure that you made a difference in somebody's life. You know, that whole you made, family's life. You made yes. a family happy. Uh, that's, 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 that's priceless to me. So a lot of times I look, I, I look out for those moments and it makes me sleep good at night saying, hey, look at that little boy from Haiti coming to America and look at what he's doing. He's, he's helping family members sleep good at night because... I didn't charge I them. You I, 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 didn't, I tell them, I tell them, don't go call your neighbor and say, "Friends, did this for me for free." <laughs> <laughs> don't sweat the world that way. <laughs> I say, I have, I have a lifetime to support. I have a lifetime to support. So yeah. that's what happened. Yeah, my, my wife just walked in. She went to church without me. I told her today, today was special for for me, Miss Elma, Elma Wilson. <laughs> I appreciate you. Hi, Shirley. She's been watching online. Yes. Um, oh, she has, oh, oh. Yeah, she's on Facebook Live. Okay, she was driving. Yeah, she was okay. driving. She just got home. All right. Yes. Um, so how would you tell a man, a, a friend of yours, a male friend, if you see some things off? How would you introduce? at least therapy for them because they cannot go psych let's go to a psychiatrist that mm -hmm. tells them automatically or oh, you think i'm crazy how would you and pull them in without the stigma yes uh, remember, remember what i told you before is that uh, the first the first um time that you could you know, the first thing you have to do is to acknowledge the same thing with, with an alcoholic if the alcoholic is not, does not acknowledge that he has a problem and that he needs help, then he would never, he would always think it's good to get up in the morning and get his uh, uh, NSC and start drinking and get his blue and start drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Johnny. Cheers to, blue. <laughs> Cheers to the blue light. I should have had my bottle here with me. Yes. <laughs> they might think that's a normal thing to do. So uh, same thing for mental health. If I had a friend 
and and, and I wanted him to see. I I, I wouldn't I would want to see my friend because they're not gonna happen to me because they know that we're friends. So I've had friends that that mental health issues, and I send them out to see my uh, colleagues because I, I don't want to I don't I don't want to know about the family situation because we have that friendship, and and I and I understand that they're not gonna be open up to me. So in order to in, in all fairness, I think they they will get be better served by another person that do not know not, nothing about them, and they'll be more open. And the more open you are, uh, that that's, you get the best. Uh, and I always tell my my patients, I'm as good as you are. If you come to me and you tell me a bunch of lies, you're not going to get the proper treatment. If you come to me and you tell me sin sincerely what's going on with you, and you tell me what what has what has worked for you in the past or what didn't work, and we're working as a team, it's a teamwork. Mm -hmm. It's a teamwork. So the two of us get together, and we're gonna. Join. I said, you don't know. Whenever my patient has to go back to the hospital, it's like somebody take a knife and, and stick me. It, feel, it feels to me as though I failed that patient. If the patient is truly following my plan of care, because every patient has a plan of care mm -hmm. and they know what they're supposed to do, I've given them the tools to follow. Now, if they, if they follow those tools and still feel, then I feel that I, I, I failed them. And I, 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 I don't want to be perfect in, in, in perfect world. So I'm not perfect. So there are times that my combination of therapy or my condition of medication uh, is, was not the right one and patient end up going to the hospital. And then she come back and then we, we work out another thing. And then we get, we, um, the hospital stabilize them and then we follow the same medication, the doctor from the hospital. It doesn't happen too frequent, but it, it has happened. Uh, that patient um, didn't get the proper treatment or whatever that I prescribed to them did not, did not work well for them. So uh, uh, to conclude is that, um, if you want to help somebody, you have to be truthful to them. You have to let them in. From what I'm seeing from my prof professional experience, you are dealing with this. And as a friend, I would like to refer you to so-and-so, and that person might be able to help you. And please be open. I know it's, it might be shameful to divulge that information to a complete stranger, but that's the only way you're going to get the proper help. So please go and see. That that's that's that has been my that's how I deal when I have friends or people that I know that needs to be uh, to have mental health. I there was a there was a video on social media about a young lady in Haiti that committed suicide. Um, that that because, died by suicide. They don't want us to use committed anymore. They used uh, to die by suicide because committed uh, make them feel like uh, they did it on purpose. So, uh, so it, that's the reason why they changed it. They said we don't use the word "committed" anymore. We said "die." By we suicide. are making strides. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. So she died yeah, you, you by don't suicide. Want to remember, yeah, you don't family member to feel, uh, you know, like guilty, she feel, feeling some kind of way. Could help her. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, this one, she supposedly it was because of a boyfriend that broke up with her, and. You know, our people took on Facebook and tore her down. What's wrong with you? There's so many men out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would be, um, yes. I would be, um, I wouldn't be dying for no men that, mm -hmm. you know, pop it up and, you know, they went off. It was a few of us, thank God for, for, social media and the internet it was a few of us that intervened and said mm -hmm. this is a disease it's That's not right. what it seems like and i kind of went to explain to them that here in america maybe i will share this with everybody else um i say to her here in america they take it very seriously mm -hmm. We provide help for people that that are feeling that side. We have 800 numbers to show people there is help out here. I, I said there's 800 numbers you can call and the police would come and get you and get you to the hospital if they need to. These are the program. And, and, and Mary Verna just asked this question and that's what made me remember it. What will be a good mental health program that you can suggest to start in Haiti right now um, with, her, with 
all of the organizations around with all the organizations around. So it's a it's it it will be a big job. So yeah. Well, remember, like I told you, I've, I've been here for two and a half years. I've yet to have one Asian. When I get one Asian coming to my clinic then <laughs> to to for help, that because it's still it's we we are still very close. Uh, it doesn't mean that we cannot provide that, especially after the the earthquake. With all these people dealing with trauma, people people losing their limbs, uh, at that point they really need it. That's a, that would be a good time to come in and 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 talk about mental health. Can you imagine one day you you had two legs and the next day you, you get off one. One day everybody was a family and then one day you're not able to go inside your house because you're afraid that the house might fall up with you. There's so trauma. much trauma. Mm -hmm. So that that would have been a good time to implement mental health then, but. We know how people, how they feel about the stigma is still there. They still, uh, they still have so many other issues going on in the country that the that mental health it takes is not going to take a priority at, more at this time. Not right that, that not that I want mode. to not that I want to minimize it. Uh, it's it's really important to have mental health. But if you if you're hungry, uh, mental health is not something you consider. If your country is unsafe, you don't know if you're going to get up tomorrow. Somebody going to break down your your, your door and, and kidnap you. Mental health is not gonna uh, be your priority at this time. But there are, I know there's a lot of programs. There's a lot of I have people asking me donation all the time. I don't know <laughs> a donation for to send to Haiti, things like that, to help with orphanage and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very it's a generalized question, and it's very hard for me to say exactly. But uh, another uh, uh, first thing first, we have to we have to have stability in the, in the country first. And people have to feel safe. Unless you feel safe, you're not going to be able to do other things to keep you safe. Understand? So safety is first. We all need safety. You can imagine if you had to go to work and not knowing when you get home, you'll be able to turn your, turn your key and get inside your house. Tell me how you would feel. So that's the same thing. A lot of, for, for a lot of the Asian people that do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. There's no hope. So we have to bring hope. We have to bring things. The, the, the thing that we're doing now with the canal, where, where we're doing things to, to improve the agriculture in our country, to make more food available for people so that people take a sense of pride in their own countries of knowing that we can do. We don't have to go to the Dominican Republic to get their things. We can do it on our own. So this is a step forward. Those, those are the things that we need. Those are the, the things we need to start paving for our country. Things like that. Once people start feeling comfortable, uh, feeling safe, then we can start introduce those other things. Understand? We just have, just have to look at priorities first. And these things are important, but there are things that are more important than others. Safety, nothing beats safety. Safety would be number one. I agree. Um, having said all that, maybe that's something we need to work towards. Yeah. You know? And I'm, and I'm open. I'm open whatever I can do. Uh, to make things better for my country, to make things better for our community. And I'm I'm open. I'm, I'm open to share my expertise. I'm open to lend a hand where I can. Awesome. Um, you know how for my 50th, I did a tree planting. At the time, that was a big thing that um, yes. we're losing our land. Um, Dr. Funds, I'm going to call on you because, you know, this mental health is dear to my heart now. That's why. Yes, so if you can help one per, if you can only help one person from suffering, your job is done. So we're gonna come up with with a program, um, okay. and I know I'm gonna have Mary Verna cheer me on with this program to Haiti because <laughs> she's she's my biggest cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> So I honor you today, Marivina. Thank you. Um, having said all that, let me share. Um, you have your private practice, which mm -hmm. is it's, it's called. Uh, oh, you have it. You have it down. No, I don't have it down. Um, I, I'm gonna. Um, it's called. It's called the Mind of Fair Behavioral Health Services. So um, I provide I provide mental health services to 
you know, children and adults, elderly patients. Once a month, once a month, I go to two nursing homes on the border of Florida and Georgia to see uh, a lot of elderly patients who are suffering from dementia. Uh, a lot of them de depressed. Can you imagine you used to live in your beautiful house and your husband passed away? So your kids are working, you can't, let, you can't be left in the house. So you end up in a nursing home. And so a, a lot of depression, a lot of guilt feeling, a lot of, you know, anger. So I go, I go there once a month. And now they're asking me to try to come two times, a, two times a month, but I'm so busy. And every time I go there, I have to, I have to fly to Jacksonville and then get, get in my car and, and, and spend two, three days there. They ask me to provide me with a, with a place to stay. And that's good, but um, it's good. I mean, they look forward to see me when I come there <laughs> once a month. Uh, now they're yeah. trying to see if I can come every other week. So what's and the name we'll of the practice? Um, the letter A as an apple, mind, like your mind, M-I-N-D, affair, A-F-F-A-I-R. A mind affair. No, no, a um, mind affair. Yeah, not, oh, you, you, you would, a mind of, a mind affair. But I mean, you didn't, you didn't separate the words. Okay, the so A, it's. A as an apple, mind. Affair. Yeah. It's like, it's like your mind is having an affair. That's what happened with a lot of time with bipolar, with schizophrenia. The mind is <laughs> is confused that they have been it's having an affair. That's how I come up with the word. A mind awesome. affair. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful name. Yeah. Um so behavior, I know you all, you said you said behavior health. Mm -hmm. Be of your role. Well, uh, yeah, AL mm -hmm. health services. Now, you it it is a virtual. You said you do some virtual things. Yeah, I do virtual uh, only uh, 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 and unless I travel to the border of Florida and Georgia to do. Uh, to see those patients, uh, to do mental health services. Mm -hmm. So, it can being virtual, can anybody from any state contact you? No, I'm I'm only licensed. I'm only licensed in Georgia and Washington State, uh, Washington, Washington State. So I can only you can only provide um, SE a license in Georgia. Georgia and. Washington State, not Washington DC, Washington State, but Seattle, where it gets very cold. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, tomorrow I'm flying to Washington State. Um, uh, I'm going to be there tomorrow, tomorrow until Friday. I go there. I go there in person because the law requires that anybody who's taking controlled substances. Mm -hmm. I have quite a patient. I have quite an ADHD patient who are on stimulants. Mm -hmm. Stimulants are controlled substances. I have quite a few patients who are anxiety that's taking benzodiazepine, like Xanax, uh, Valium, and stuff like that. Those patients have to be seen virtually. So once every three, four months, I have to fly uh, to Washington State and see those patients in person. Otherwise, the pharmacy would not dispense the medication if they cannot prove that they were seen in person. Uh-huh. Now, yeah. so Georgia, and you, you, you do physical, in, can you travel to other states? I cannot only those two states. Uh, um, for each state, I can I can do I can do I can go to fifty states in the United States, but mm -hmm. I have to have license for each. So I right see. now my license is in Georgia. So you cannot operate on a state that you are not licensed with. I see. So if I'm not licensed in Florida, I cannot go call a patient in Florida because um I'm not going to get paid because the, the insurance company is going to look before they pay you to see whether you are licensed to perform in that state. I so, see. so another for you to get a lot of my players at Blue Cross Blue Shield, they do have on file that I'm only they only pay me if I see patient in Georgia or Washington State. I see. So why did you pick these two states to be licensed in? First of all, I live in Georgia, so that's a given. That's it. So, that is the one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then Washington State uh, is one of the places that needs sight more than ever, than ever because Seattle. If you ever heard of Seattle, it's, it wins there all the time. It's gloomy. Mm. The weather is not the best weather at all. Wow. So the, the, the number, that's one of the states that has the highest weight of suicide. So a lot of depression, a lot of suicide because they have the sundowners because they barely see any sun. Like I'm going there tomorrow. I, I know that I'm not. <laughs> <there's> not <much. laughs> there's no sun. You know, it's funny how these things affects our mood. 
That's right. I know I have a friend um, who tells me that when this holiday season starts in November, she's mm -hmm. hearing up because her husband's about to start acting crazy. Yeah. He acts up, it acts, he acts like it's the money that's gonna be spent for the holiday. But she said, even when I don't spend money, yes, um, he's still in a state of not normal up and the whole winter season. Yes, that's why they have a diagnosis called seasonal, seasonal affect disorders. That that's there mean, is such thing. That that's mean, yeah, they do have that diagnosis. I, and I have people, and I have people that tell me, doctor, I come to see you just for the fall season. After the fall season, I don't have no medication. And I give them medication just to last them three months. And after that, I follow the, with them at the end, and they, they, they're okay, and we leave it there. So it's, it's just for that season that they need that help. And they know that. They know the body. And, and then you, you give them that diagnosis and you give them treatment for that three months and they're fine uh, until they come back again next year. And they, wow. they'll, and they, they, they'll come, they'll send me a request. Hey, Doc, it's my time again. <laughs> it's that time of the year again. Let's the do it again. time of year. <laughs> but some people, he never gets help for it. Maybe I'll suggest that to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He probably Season, doesn't. Se season, seasonal, affect, seasonal affective disorder. That's the name of it. Wow. Sad. And then sad too. It's called sad. Okay. The, the um, acronym for it is sad. Seasonal that, affective. That's interesting. So, yes. <laughs> when she said that to me, I said you are uh, exaggerating. That man don't oh, no, go she's three not. months. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. It does she exist. Said, she said, "I know what I'm talking about." Every and then, and then, in November. And then uh, some people. Some people. Um, you may have um, a family member that died during a certain period. Let's say if you had somebody that was close to you that died in June and something like that. So, or during um, 4th of July. So when that holiday is coming, it's very traumatic. It brings back all the memory of that person. And then you started weeping and crying again. And some people do go into a deep depression uh, when, when, when the loved one passed away and the, the, the anniversary is coming up. Things like that, or a special occasion that reminds them of that loved one that, that has moved on, uh, can affect them. And not all the time that they do need uh, medication for that. A lot of time they do psychotherapy, mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you just show them. You just go back and talk about all the positive things that the person did in their life, and for them to start, you know, hold on to those and, and let let the passing because the passing away there's nothing you can do about it. But the, the things that that you would need to hold on. Is the thing that you guys did the, the, the trip you took to Paris, uh, the the uh, other things, the long distance drive you did to Florida, things like that. Mm -hmm. We talk about things like that, and that's, and, that's, and then you, you you can see how the facial expression start changing because you're talking you you're making them see. Oh yes, we did do that. We did do things like that. So that's that's what therapy do. Therapy make, makes bring you back and makes you feel that yes, the person is gone, but this is the things that we did and those things work. Beautiful, wonderful, and then if we can, if we can, if we can live that in your mind instead of the, the passing away, that see makes that you feel life better. is still worth living. That, you still that's can why. make memories, and um, I love the study of positive psychology because I felt like it doesn't go to the bad things; it just focuses on what's working on your life right now. That's right. That's, that's um, correct. And, and, and then that's that's our problem with human beings. We could have we could have so much so much blessing in our life, but when things go wrong, that's we let that we one thing to. consume us and not and not and not thank God for all the other blessing, for all the all the good stuff that are happening in our lives. So and that's why when something happened to me, my father said, Why are you never mad? You never I said, I'm so blessed. Whenever I'm, I, I want to be mad, I take where, where I came from. But that's that's and, when you were in Haiti, you you were you were the goofiest. <laughs> you were the goofiest cousin of all, and I have that's some right. cousin online. Can you attest to that? So Juju, it, oh please you. don't get don't don't get Juju on me now. <laughs> um, find the good, Bernadette said. It makes no sense. Seasonal affective disorder. That's Dr. Joanne joined us. Oh, hello, um, Dr. Joanne. <laughs> that's your friend from Haiti. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's, why she's doing good stuff, good things in Pennsylvania. Yes, yeah, she's doing wonderful things always. Um, yes. So I say all that. I, 
I know you're busy. You probably don't need no more, um, no more patience, but I, I hope one day you expend your licenses and, and cover us statewide so that I can. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but in our fairness, um, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, I mean, they are, uh, when you look at, um, you could go online and Google and you see how many, the number of, of practitioners in each state, and then you'll see there's a lot of um, practitioners that so you guys are well covered. You are <laughs> you guys have a lot of things. So the so but, I tried to go I tried to go to inner, I, I tried to go to inner cities to the places where it's very difficult for them to get mental health oh. uh, services. Uh, I tried to tag, target those places. But now those two places are, are enough for me. Uh, if I get another place, then I'll have to hire another NP um, to do that. But I'm not to that point yet. Um, okay. Yes. Well, but, I appreciate uh, you. Um, those who are in Washington State and Georgia, you can continue <laughs> to call him. Leave some time for me when I need to talk to him and have a live session again. <laughs> yeah, um, um, you could put my um, email information. It's info, like information. Info. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At um, the mind affair. A mind affair. Dot com. His his email his 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 email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a tongue tie. Info um, the mind affair. So that's why that's why that's how patient gets to me. So yeah, that's good. Okay, so anybody that from there, I, I make it bigger so everybody can see it see. better. Mm -hmm. Um. That's the first step to send an email if yes. you need help. Okay. Um, my, my, my one thing, um, uh, a while ago you gave the number, the 800 number, but uh, a lot of times people may not remember that 800 number, mm -hmm. but that's the 911. 911 is always is universal. If you need help, you call 911. Somebody can come and help you. You are not, uh, people, I want people to know that they are not alone, that they can always get help. And there's, there's, there's also the suicide line that new number 988, they can also call 988 where they can also get uh, um, somebody online to talk to them and see, they, they, they do like a triage and see uh -huh. whether they, uh, they need further assistance. So 988? Yes. They, yeah, 911 is, they can call 911, they'll always get help or they'll call 988. Okay. Let me put 988 back here. Mm -hmm. So call 911. It's the simplest, most easiest that everybody yes. remembers. Mm -hmm. If you feel in distress. That's why. Um, and there's different local crisis units that you can call. These are good information to have um, in your county where you live, in your borough yes. where, you live, where you live. All these information are online. If you go to Pennsylvania, you put the section you live, if it's Upper Derby, if it's Derby yes. Township, Philadelphia, all the cities has crisis help, all kinds of things. My organization are training police officers to have them make the dif to differentiate from criminal calls and mental health, health and mental health call because that seemed to be to have been a big issue they put everybody in prison in jail meanwhile the person needs um mental that's yeah. that's that's if they're lucky yeah <laughs> a lot of them they get shot too because the police is afraid uh, the person coming out with you uh, with a, with a knife and then like that, they are taught to just shoot. But now, I'm, now they're doing better. I'm, 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 a lot of the police department are training them when if it's if it's a mental health situation that they need to reevaluate situation before putting the trigger. See that? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's so, that, whatever what you guys do. You know, it's very important um, training them uh, to you know to assess the situation before uh, yeah. making a decision to shoot somebody. The CIT training they call it. Um, okay. So 988 is, uh, is for suicide? Yes. I 
Uh-uh. C-I-D-E. C-I-D. No, um, yeah. C Here we go. Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, there it is. Um, this is what we have in America that many third world countries do not have. Mm -hmm. So we do have the help. There's help for everybody that needs it. I encourage people to do it. I encourage people to talk to their um providers. Their providers. Um get a therapist, make it part of your a lot of jobs are really pushing mental health, work-life balance. So the words are getting out there. Um, I just wish we could reach Haiti with them. <laughs> <laughs> slowly, 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 but surely we'll slowly get Slowly, but surely. Yes. Well, I cannot thank you enough, cousin. <laughs> Isn't no. it nice to have your family members in your circle to 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 have all the skills to have all that we need to talk about? Our family is so big. I'm so mm. grateful that. And then, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. And, and I'm I'm so happy to be able to talk to you to be able to be a resource for for the family and for everybody else that need it. And I, I look forward for things like that. Sometimes I say to myself, my goodness, what happened to my to my community? What happened to family members? How come I'm not getting calls from my family about that? And I know there's a lot of people hurting, especially during COVID. Yeah. But maybe maybe I need to do something. I need to do something for my own self too to be a little bit more open and calling people and, and see how things going. I try to do it, but I don't think I do it enough. It, it, you're busy. Uh, but, you're busy. Yeah. That's why yeah, these but, talks are important. Yes. So thank yeah. you so much for doing that. Uh, and I really appreciate the time we spent here. I appreciate and, uh, you. And I have to, when I got this picture from you, I said, I asked for a headshot. I said, of course he's dapper. He has to send me <laughs> the full body. He is always looking good, even when he wasn't a doctor. <laughs> thank you, thank you, cuz. Thank you, thank, thank you, cuz. Thank you for everybody that took time out of the busy Sunday morning to join us live. Juju, Mama, uh, um, Bernie, and Marie, thanks so much. If, there is a, if, if I forget anybody else, I'm sorry. I'm not able to see Dr. who else Duane, is watching. Yes. And, and and thanks for those beautiful questions. They were very thoughtful questions. And I hope I did my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Yes. And, and I know if I, if I didn't... a million people on, our, on social media because I will flood social media with it. Um, you know, the YouTube, this is good information too. I, I'm I'm so grateful for social media. I'm so grateful for the way things are going. We don't have to wait for a producer to produce a song, a, a, a <laughs> show for us. We can put the word out there. Um, we have no bounds. Anybody can watch it from anywhere in the world. So I'm grateful for that. Yes, social media, social media is wonderful when it's when it's when it's used for the when it's used, when it's properly. used properly. Yes. It, it, it also destroyed a lot of lives. So I, I, we, have, we, have, we have to keep that into perspective. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yes, yes, but yes. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for your time. I love you. Hope I love you too. Thank you so much, family. everybody. Happy Sunday. Enjoy the rest of the day. And I look forward to going. He has a mention in it. I remember when I told Juju, I went to Fun's house. He is rich. You should see his house. <laughs> Can't wait to get to Georgia to get my VIP treatment. <laughs> I'm not rich. I'm blessed. you blessed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you, cousin. Thanks. All right, y'all. Have a good All one. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs>